If you've ever been confused about the different parts of a crochet stitch, then this video is exactly what you need. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Jane and today I'm going to show you all the different parts of a crochet stitch. You can often find instructions in a pattern where it directs you to different parts of a stitch and by the end of this video you'll be able to understand all of them. I'll also show you examples of different stitches so make sure you watch the video right to the end. Okay so here I've done a swatch of treble crochet. Now I do work in UK terms so a treble crochet in the US is known as a double crochet and I'm just going to pick out one of the stitches here. So this in its entirety is one stitch. If we tilt the work up, you see that we have the tops of the stitches here, and then at the bottom we have the chain. So as we're looking at this swatch, we have two rows, and I've just worked this way on the row. So when you're looking at a stitch or, that you've, or a row that you've just started, and you have essentially the right side of the work facing you in terms of uh, what you've just worked. The top of the stitch is going to be before the stitch. And this is no matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, it will always be before the stitch. So if you're left-handed, obviously you'll have worked this way, so it will be before the stitch. From a right-handed perspective, we have the stitch before, and then we turn it round and when you have the wrong side of the work facing you in terms of which way you've just worked, it will be after the stitch. So just bear that in mind as I walk through this video. If I say the right side of the work, I mean the right side as it's facing you when you've just done a row. So if we go into the top of the stitch, so I'll go in with my darning needle here, you can see that you have that V on the needle and it's a uh, it has two loops to it. So we have two loops on the top of the stitch. And this is where we would normally work through when we go into a stitch as normal. So now let's look at the front loop and the back loop. So when we're looking at our stitch here, always the side closest to you is your front loop. So that's here. And the side furthest away from you is the back loop like so. So we'll often work in the front loop or back loop when we're doing things like a ridged stitch and it just creates a little indentation in our work so that it's not flat like this, it will step back and then step forwards. And if you had the wrong side facing you, you would still have your front loop which is closest to you and the back loop, which is furthest away. So it doesn't matter which side is facing you, it's always the one closest to you, which is the front loop and the furthest away, which is the back. So now let's move on to the post of a stitch. Now, as we look at this treble crochet, we have the top of the stitch here, and then we have the actual stitch down here, which goes into the top of the stitch from the previous row. So this whole body of the stitch is known as the post. Now, obviously we've done a treble crochet, so this is a little bit bigger here. So as your stitch gets smaller, this will be a little bit more trickier to see, but I will show you that later on in the video. So you might be asked to work around the post of a stitch when doing some more textured work. So you could either work around the post like this, so from front to back to front, and that would be a front post stitch, or you would work it around it from back to front to back, and that would be a back post stitch. So that is the post of your stitch. We then have the legs of a stitch. Now, obviously, however big your stitch is, it's still going to always insert into the, um, a stitch from below. And where it inserts into that stitch, that is the legs. So you can just see here we have two little posts here that are the legs of a stitch. Now let's have a look at the third loop. So the third loop is at the top of a stitch. We have the front loop and the back loop here, so it's not those ones. If I turn the work, we can see here just underneath this front and back loop, there is another post that goes across like there, another loop. If I just insert my darning needle into there, that is the third loop. 
So this is the third loop on the right side of the work. And you'll also have a third loop on the wrong side of the work. So if I just turn this over here, you can just see inside there, that is the third loop on the wrong side of the work. So we work into these on something like camel stitch, for example. And again, it just creates a really beautiful texture because what it actually does when you're working into these, if you were working into the, the back third loop, the third loop on the wrong side, it actually tilts that front loop and back loop of the top of the stitch forwards. So it just creates a really nice ridge. It's worth noting that you will only find this on stitches where you do an initial yarn over. So you wouldn't find it on a double crochet, which is a UK term, which is a single crochet in the US. So let's just quickly recap on this treble crochet. We have the top of the stitch and within the top of the stitch, we have the front loop, which is always the side closest to you and the back loop, which is always the side furthest away. We then have the post, so the post of the stitch, which is the main body of the stitch. We have the legs of the stitch, which is right at the base where it's inserted into the previous row. And then we have the third loop, which is on the right side. And then the third loop, which is on the wrong side. So once you get to grips with all of these terms it should be pretty easy when you see them come up in a pattern to know exactly where they are. So I know it can be a little bit tricky when you're first starting out to remember all these things. I have actually put this information in my brand new book. So this is the anatomy of a stitch where you can find all of the information that I've talked about in this video today with visual prompts as well. So I'll leave a link in the description box below of my new book if you want to go and check it out. So now that we've done treble crochet, let's take a look at some different stitches. Okay, so here is our double crochet swatch, which is single crochet in the US. We can tell that this is the right side facing because our Vs are going from big to small. Obviously, if you're left-handed, they will be the opposite way. So here is the top of the stitch, the front loop, the back loop, the post of the stitch is a little bit more tricky to see. So we want to find, well, let's have a look at the legs of the stitch first. So these are the legs of the stitch. So they're just the front, uh, those front ones which are going into the stitch below. And then if we just pull apart, so we go under the top loops, we see that gap there and the gap the other side, that is the post of the stitch we do not have a third loop on a double crochet. So here we have a half treble swatch, and then we have the top of our stitch. We have the front loop and the back loop. Here is the post of our stitch, so just going behind that post, so the entirety of that stitch. We have the legs of our stitch, and then here we have the third loop with the right side facing and then the third loop on the wrong side facing. So I hope you feel a little bit more confident with the anatomy of a stitch. Another thing that you might find difficult when first learning to crochet is crochet tension. And if you want some hints and tips for that, then check out this video right here.